Hello and welcome to today's session as we embark on a journey filled with learning and discovery about the intricacies of our human body. So today I want to introduce to you a fundamental aspect of cell biology that plays a vital role in maintaining tissue integrity and cell functions. These are the cell junctions, guys. So cell junctions are just like bridges that do connect cells with the tissues and this allows them to communicate at here and work together harmoniously to support the overall functions of organ and systems in our body. So understanding cell junction is very crucial for nurses because they underpin the structure and function of every tissue and organ that we encounter in our healthcare settings. Okay, so let's try and delve into these different types of cell junctions, okay? So we'll, we'll start with the, the tight junctions, the adherent junctions, desmosome, esmodesmosomes, and then the gap junctions. So starting with the, uh, the tight junctions. So how do tight junctions appear? They appear like a tightly sealed zipper between cells, okay? So these tight junctions, they do form continuous strands of integral membrane proteins, and this creates a barrier that prevents leakage of fluid and solutes between, uh, between cells, okay? In clinical settings, you find that tight junctions are very essential in maintaining the integrity of epithelial barriers, such as the blood, uh, blood brain barrier, the BBB, and the intestinal uh, lining, okay? The, these tight junctions are also very equally important in the urinary bladder, where they prevent the leakage of urine, okay? So tighter junctions retard the passage of substances between cells, and they prevent the contents of these organs from leaking into the blood or the surrounding tissues, all right? Next, we look at the adherent junction, guys. So how do adherent junction appear? Adherent junctions are like study drops. These, they anchor cells together. So we have the cathedral proteins linked to actin filaments that provide mechanical strength and ad adhesion between the adjacent cell, particularly in epithelial and endothelial cells. So as nurses, it's important for us to understand cell junctions helps us to appreciate the importance of tissue integrity in wound healing and preventing infections of many kinds. So the transmembrane proteins here will be the cathedrins, which are going to be joining our cells together. All right? All right? And we can be able to have them here on our, on our diagram. So each cathedrin is normally inserts into the plug from the opposite side of the plasma membrane, partially crossing the inter intercellular space and then connects to the cathedrins of adjacent uh, cells. So in epithelial cells, these ad uh, adherent junctions often form extensive zones that we refer to them as adhesion bells because they encycle the cells similar to the way the bells uh, encycles your wastes. So adherent junctions generally help epithelial uh, surfaces resist separation during uh, various contractile activities, such as when food moves through the, the intestines, all right? Okay, so now after looking at, um, at the two where we have looked at the tight junctions and you have looked at the adherent junction, in this nice high time we move to the third one, which is uh, the desmosomes, all right? So how do desmosomes appear? They appear as strong Velcro-like connections between cells. We have cathedral proteins uh, linked to intermediate filaments to provide robust adhesion and structural support, especially in tissues subjected to mechanical stress, such as the skin, the cardiac, uh, the cardiac muscles, so as a nurse, recognizing the significance of desmosomes can guide us, provide care in patients with conditions like wounds and also the cardiac, the cardiac, the cardiac tissues. So unlike the adhering junction, the plug of desmosomes does not attach the microfilament. So instead, a desmosome plug attaches to filaments of the cytoskeleton, known as the intermediate filaments, okay, that consist of protein keratin, okay? 
So these intermediate filaments extend from the desmosomes on one side of the cell across the cytosol to the desmosome of the opposite uh, side of the cell. So this structural arrangement normally contributes to the stability of cells and tissues. So these pod weld like junctions are common among the cells that make up the epidermis. Uh, this is the most uh, superficial layer of the skin and also among the cardiac muscle cells that we have already mentioned. Desmosomes prevent the epidermoses from separating uh, under tension and uh, cardiac muscles from pulling apart during the contraction, uh, contraction process. Okay guys, so we have a quiz here. So which type of cell junctions will anchor the epithelial cells to the basal lamina, providing structural support? Which one guys? Correct. Hemidesmosomes, and give, this gives us the new uh, presentations. Okay, so this um, these hemidesmosomes uh, they act as anchors that connect cells to the intracellular matrix. So we have integrin proteins that link intermediate filaments to the basal lamina, providing structural support, particularly in the epithelial cells like the skin. So, as also an us recognizing his hemidesmosomes role is essential in understanding wound care and tissue regeneration. Okay, so that is very important. And remember, when we say hemi, it's a half, so it's a half desmosomes. They just resemble desmosomes, but they do not link adjacent cells. So this name arises from the fact that they look like a half desmosomes. That's why they are referred to as hemidesmosomes. However, the difference is the transmembrane uh, glycoproteins in hemidesmosomes are integrins rather than cathedrins are found in the demi uh, the, in the desmosomes. Okay. On the inside of the plasma membrane, integrins will attach to the intermediate filament made up of protein keratin, while on the outside of the plasma membrane, integrins will attach to protein laminin, which is present in the basement uh, membrane. So that's these hemidesmosomes, they help as anchor cells, not to each other, but to the, to the, basement, the basement membrane. Okay, guys, the last group of this junction is the gap junctions. Okay, guys, so on our diagram, you can be able to see how the gap junction, uh, they appear. And you in this one, for us to understand the gap junctions better, you need to imagine tiny tunnels between cells, allowing direct communication. So gap are formed by connexin proteins that do facilitate the passage of ions and small molecules between cells. And this enable coordinated responses in tissues like the nervous and the cardiac muscles. So as nurses, it's equally important for us to understand the role of the gap junction in enhancing our comprehension of the physiological process and potential therapeutic intervention, of course, in our, in our care. So the connections are supposed to be noted in that case. So the transfer of nutrients and perhaps waste takes place through gap junctions in our vascular tissues, such as the lens and the cornea of the and the cornea of the eye. Gap junctions allow the cells in the tissue to communicate with each other. So you find in a developing embryo, some chemical and electrical signals that regulate growth and differentiation normally travel through gap junction. So gap junction also enable nerve and muscle impulses to, to spread rapidly um, among cells, a process that is very crucial for the normal operation of part of the nervous system and the contraction of muscle in the heart, the gastrointestinal tract, and the uterus. Okay, guys, so we can wrap up the video by going through the differences between uh, the five types of cell junctions, starting with the cell type junctions, adherent junctions, desmosomes, uh, gap junctions, and hemidesmosomes. So you find the tight junctions, these are continuous strands of in integral membrane proteins. Whereas in, in adherent junctions, we have cathedrin proteins that link to actin filaments. Cathedrin uh, uh, proteins in desmosomes, they are linked to intermediate filaments, while the gap junction has connexon proteins that form tunnels allowing small molecules to pass Okay.
Lastly, the hydrimidesmosomes, they are made up of integrin proteins that link intermediate filaments to the basement uh, lamina. In terms of function, you find that tight junctions, uh, they form a barrier to prevent the leakage of fluids and solutes between cells, while the adherent junctions, they provide mechanical strength and adhesion between adhesion cells, and the desmosomes provide strong adhesion and structural support between cells. In gap junctions, the, the major function is to facilitate direct communication and passage of ions and small molecules between cells. And lastly, the hemidosmosomes, they do anchor epithelial cells to the basement lamina, and this provides structural support. So the tight junctions can be found in the epithelial cell sheets, while the adherent junctions can be found in epithelial, endothelial, and cardiac muscles. Desmosomes, on the other hand, they can be found in the epithelial, cardiac, and muscle tissues, while the gap junction will be found in the nervous tissue, cardiac muscle, and smooth muscle. Lastly, desmosomes can be found in the epithelial tissues, especially in the skin, okay, in the skin, especially in the epidermal layer, uh, from the epidermal layer into the dermis, we have the basement uh, layer, the stratum basale will have it there so that it can be able to anchor those different layers. Okay guys, that marks the end of our presentation on the cell junctions. Remember to go into the description and take on the, and attempt the free quiz on the topic. Thank you so much.